Based on these caveats, what we are seeing is emergence of the second wave of positive psychology. And that second wave is riding on the recognition of the dialectics of the positive negative of the human psyche. This is explained by Lumas and uh, colleague in large number of papers. Uh, we can summarize this aspect in the three principles, principle of appraisal, principle of covalence and principle of complementarity. Principle of appraisal is about difficulty of categorizing phenomena as either positive or negative. Is optimism always positive and pessimism always negative? It is a questionable thing. So, this principle is about that. Principle of covalence is about those experiences which involve blend of so called positive and so called negative exp uh, experiences. This is explained by Lomas through post traumatic growth and love. These two examples explain the principles of covalence. Based on these two principles, they arrive at the third principle that is principle of complementarity. That says that flourishing depend on a complex balance and harmonizing of the light and dark side of life. Let us look at these principles in more detail. So, principle of appraisal, this can be understood by so many examples, we will look at uh, these four or five examples. Optimism and pessimism, so optimism is good, it is good for well being for the normal population as well it is good for the uh, uh, serious patients of the different diseases. Medicine works probably uh, more uh, strongly in the people who are having the optimistic attitude about uh, their cure, but it is not that pessimism is always negative and always uh, pathological. We can take example of NASA's endless simulation of the bad news scenario about any project there is a very active sincere thinking about what may go wrong and based on that large number of simulations are played. So, pessimism over here is resulting into positive outcome of this in terms of the success of the project, it is contributing to the success of the project. Whereas, many a time optimism may play as detrimental and there is a study being quoted in this paper which says that in the game of gambling more optimistic people actually lose more money, they suffer more. There are large number of studies suggesting that self esteem is very important for personal growth, it is positively related with the well being. But it is also found and in one of the Seligman's work itself it is reported that inflated self esteem that because of the teachers and the parents uh, extra effort to build the self esteem, child or people can develop inflated self esteem and when these people come across, when the reality hit, reality of the world hits them, they are more likely to go into depression. So, high self esteem which otherwise in general is considered to be good for well being was found to be not good in many such cases. Similarly, humility which is considered to be opposite of self esteem was found to be very very useful, more functional resulting into long term well being in many studies. Th third example is freedom and restriction. A very straightforward simplistic understanding will say freedom is good and restrictions are bad. But if you look at the health literature, if you look at the sports people, if we look at the scholarly academic pursuits, we can quickly understand that freedom can be detrimental and 
if we consider routines, the tough routines, rigid pattern as, as opposite to freedom, they are actually good for academic excellence. They are very important part of the training of any athlete. There are another study, there are other sets of study about freedom and restriction in the field of marketing. In marketing, it, they, are, they have found that when customers are presented larger number of choices, their subsequent satisfaction is likely to be lower because there is a sense of I might have missed out something. So, actually more freedom result into lesser satisfaction and that probably result into more consumerism and uh, uh, more uh, rush towards in all the ancient cultures, there is a recognition uh, and appreciation for following the restraint. Brahmacharya is very important part of yoga. A parigraha not holding more than what you require is part of the personal growth. So, freedom and restriction might be positive in the specific context. Third example, our next example is forgiveness and anger. Large number of studies are suggesting that forgiveness is very important for uh, attaining well-being and retaining well-being. And anger is generally understood to be uh, a detrimental feeling. It is uh, uh, and there are large number of books written about anger management, but they are not always positive or negative. Excessive forgiveness can be negative and being angry can sometimes be very useful. Famous statement of Aristotle is there, which, which goes like a uh, right amount of anger at the right situation with the right people for the right time is a wise thing. Anger is also understood, anger it can also be understood as moral emotion. May, particularly when it is directed towards others, when someone, when we see some injustice happening to someone else, if we do not feel angry, we may not feel urged to act against it. Many of such situations are studied in the context of married life as well. So, in the, in the same paper, you can look at the reference of McNutty and uh, McNutty's work with many other colleagues. They have adopted, they have followed interesting research design to understand what extent these so called positive emotions are useful and actually contribute to well being. So, they studied these variables in the context of married life and they tracked the uh, married couples newly married couples, they tracked some of the couples, looked at uh, and uh, got the assessment done about their well being, satisfaction with life etcetera for 3, 4 uh, years and they have found that optimism, self esteem, freedom, forgiveness may not be helpful in the long run in particular type of relationships. What are those type of relationships? In the for example, abusive relationships or uh, when one partner has a tendency to show anger and being abusive. When this problem is mild, optimism may work, uh, forgiveness may work. But when a partner has issue in terms of his or her anger or being abusive, more seriously in the long run actually optimism works negatively for the life satisfaction. Forgiveness actually works negatively in the long run with a partner who has excessive tendencies, serious tendency of being abusive or uh, being angry. Actually, in the being restrictive, being tough, being more affront about these negatives of the partner 
is good and it prevents the long term problems in the married life. So, uh, uh, McNutty's work is very interesting to understand the dialectical nature of the positive negative well being and it invites us to look at all these things in the particular context, in the in a particular situation certain things can be positive and negative and we need to understand these things in the right context. Another example in the principle of appraisal is about showing happiness in sadness. Because of over emphasis on importance of being happy, importance of being positive, people might be feeling and some people actually feel burdened to look positive and look happy, which eventually contribute to sadness. Sometimes it is important to express sadness, to get things resolved, to give the signal to your loved ones, to give signal to the system to respond to. So, the positive negative is not so straightforward and we need to understand in the right context and we are going to dwell deeper uh, what it means to manage our self and manage our career. Then there is a principle of covalence which says that many experiences actually involve blend of positive and negative experiences. And one example is post traumatic growth. After trauma which is actually a intensely negative experience, people large number of people result into more personal growth. They become more responsible, they become more sensitive many times they become better problem solver, their sincerity, their commitment for, the, for a positive cause all that that is found to be to have increased after the trauma. Similarly, love, love is understood in its many many shades. In the Indian tradition we call Shringar Ras and we looked at Shringar not only the uh, not, not only a pleasant experience, not only the union of the unison, union of the lovers, if it is romantic love, it is also the separation of the lovers which gives Sangar, which is called Viyog Sangar, the Sanyog which is union and Viyog which is separation, both are part of the love. And to experience love fully, experience of both the aspects are important. So, there is also no uh, distinction between positive and negative emotion. Based on the principle of appraisal and principle of uh, uh, covalence, we can say that flourishing depend on complex balance and it is somewhere experienced in harmonizing of the light and dark side of life. So, positive psychology is not just about positive, positive, positive positive psychology is about harmonizing all shades of life.